Rocky Top, you'll always be home, sweet home to me. Good old Rocky Top, Rocky Top, Tennessee. It's another weekend of college football right around the corner. I'm recording this on a Friday, which means I got some predictions to make coming up for the weekend. This is going to be an exciting week of college football, guys. Welcome to week eight of the college football predictions. Tennessee with the upset over the weekend last week. It's time to get back into the college football predictions and get going with the first matchup of the day that we are predicting, and that is going to be Tennessee themselves after losing their goalpost. They go against, I'm pretty sure this is Tennessee Monroe. I'm going to check really quick, but after that win, no, it's UT Martin. So it's an FCS game. I don't see how um, Tennessee... I don't see how Tennessee is going to falter after that. They're on the high. Got to give them the win here because, look, I mean, compared to what they just did did last week, like, how do you not pick? How do you not pick Tennessee here? Like number three in the nation, and they and and a win over Alabama. Get the flip out of here if you think Tennessee's got a chance at losing this one. Moving on down, you have Syracuse at Clemson. Now, this one is going to be interesting. Um, Syracuse, uh, Clemson, I think is coming off of a bye week here. Pulling up the, pulling up the ESPN sheet here. Actually, I can do that here. I'll do this here so that way that way you guys see what I'm looking at. ESPN. Oh, sorry, ESPN. Just so that way you guys know what I'm looking at. I had to get the video out quickly. That's why I don't have the links prepared. Or else or else we would be looking at... Um, or else I would have the links up already. But yeah, looking at looking at this Clemson and Syracuse game. I... This one... I mean, look, okay, hold on. Let's look at this really quick. So, yes. Coming off of a bye week? No. Clemson, uh, no, b both teams are coming off wins. So both teams undefeated in the ACC, and with Clemson having two extra games on, two extra games uh, over Syracuse, this one might be tough for for the Syracuse Orange here. This I look at this game, I look at this matchup, and I see a bunch of scenarios that could possibly happen. I could see Syracuse. I think Syracuse. I don't think Syracuse has beaten. Um, I don't think they've beaten, uh, Clemson in a very long time, if I can remember correctly. Yeah, full matchup sheet. So they've only played six times. Clemson has owned every single matchup, going back to the, f but, but for the first matchup, was the most dominant win for the Cir for the Orange. 2016 was the most dominant win for Clemson, and then it's been close for the la close for two years, and then it's been one sided for Clemson. But going back to 2021, Clemson did pull off a slight win. So this one is tricky to pick. Um, I really like. I really want to pick Syracuse because I hate seeing. I mean, we've seen Clemson in the in the top in the college football playoff. We've seen Ohio State in the college football playoff. We've seen Oregon. We've seen Alabama, and we've seen Georgia. We're getting Georgia this year. I don't I don't mind that. You've we haven't had much of Georgia in the college football playoff. I am kind of sick of seeing Clemson. With that being said, I'm actually going to take my ups. Oh, wrong one. I'm actually going to take my upset here. Of the week, and that is going to be Syracuse going on the road to take down the Tigers. Going back to going back to their last five games, um, Boston College not really a tough opponent, 
NC State, that was a really close matchup. But um, you can't really see... That was a really close matchup. And then the week prior, a close battle with Wake Forest that went to double overtime. Now, the difference between both of these teams is that both of these teams have already played NC State and have both come off of wins. The only reason I'm going to give Syracuse the edge here is because if you look at that NC State game, NC State did not sh apparently got completely shut down against Clemson against Syracuse and then and then NC State went to Sur went to Clemson and then was able to score 20 points. I think I think Syracuse has the better defense there, but and that's going to be the full on reason why Syracuse is going to win this game. Moving on down, you have the Cincinnati Bearcats taking on the Southern Methodist uh, Mustangs here. Uh, let me find that game really quick. Here it is. So this game is going to be on. Uh, it's going to be eleven o'clock on ESPN. Cincinnati is a three and a half point favorite, and both of these teams of uh, SMU coming off of uh, coming off a win, but one win in their last four games. Cincinnati is coming off win after win after win after win after win. But look at all those games. Both of those games were at least one point possessions, except for that Indiana game. That was their most dominant win. I think this one is. I think this one's a little bit too close. This one is going to be close to call, but but I'm gonna give it to the Bearcats here. Oh, let me do red numbers with silver background. There we go. I'm gonna give it to Cincinnati here. Cincinnati has has had an up and down season. What, their one loss was to Arkansas, but they've bounced back. They're the team. They are almost the exact same team that made the college football playoff last year. They're not going to make it this year, unfortunately, due to the group of five not getting the respect that, they're, that they rightfully deserve. But with the expansion of the college football playoff coming up soon, don't, don't be surprised if Cincinnati becomes one of, the first two one of the first few teams in the group of five that make it there. Moving down, you have Ole Miss and LSU. Now, Ole Miss... Has been oh where is that at where is that at there it is it's one the first two thirty game of the day you got this one is interesting so so the the matchup predictor is relatively close this game is split this the the spread is one and a half in favor of LSU and then let's take a look at the last five games now LSU coming off the loss to Tennessee. And then a bounce back win against Florida. They needed that bounce back win. Ole Miss is having a fantastic year, though. Looking at the, looking at their last five games, a, a shutout win over Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech hasn't been good at all this year, so you can see. So that one, it's kind of you can't use that one as a reference. But Georgia Tech has turned it around, though. I think we predict that we didn't predict them, but they did play last night. I think they got the win. I don't remember, but then that then they host Tulsa and then number seven Kentucky at number seven at the time Kentucky d dominate a Vanderbilt and then dominant win over Auburn and then like I said, looking at LSU games, the only one that the only one that strikes my eyes is the Tennessee the Tennessee loss. LSU did not show up and then then they turn around and go to Florida. LSU doesn't lose at home very much. And unfortunately, that's not going to be much of the difference here. I think Ole Miss actually can pull off the win here. Oh, that's the wrong shade of blue there. That is the wrong shade of blue. I need that. No, not that. Not there. What the flip? There, there, and there. There, that works. That, I'm going to pick Ole Miss here. I like LSU's chances there, so do not be surprised if LSU does pull off the win. But this one is too close to call. Going back up the sheet here, uh, an ele uh, no, yeah, going keep going down the sheet here should be F Fox's game of the day. Unfortunately, it's not because the best announcers are not at this game, and it utterly disappoints me. Because the game that they went to, 
I am sorry to Iowa fans. You are getting embarrassed in front of the best college football broadcasting crew there is. And and I'm not and I'm saying that as an Iowa State fan because y'all's offense is not showing up, but y'all well, we'll get to that when we get to that game because that's going to be with like the second to last game we pick. But this is arguably my game of the week. It's UCLA and Oregon and it's understandably as to why I think this is our game the game of the week. Looking at the spread, it's six and a half, but it is at all it is at Autzen Stadium in Eugene, Oregon. These two teams have had a fantastic year. Looking at Oregon's schedule though, this is where this is where my pick is gonna come in. Looking at Oregon's schedule, one top twenty five opponent, one win. Hasn't played... Actually, no. Two top 25 opponents, one win, one loss, and the one loss was to currently number one ranked Georgia. Moving over to UCLA. A win over Washington. That put the respect on their name. And then goes and upsets Utah. And puts them at number nine. This game is going to be... Fun to watch. Unfortunately, I will not be able to watch this game. I will be at work. So this one is going to be, for, for the fans that do watch this game, this one's going to be fun for you guys. Let me look at the, oh, no, not, not that one. Let me look at the matchup predictor here. So Oregon has won the last three games between UCLA and Oregon. The but 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 the last two. But wait, hold on, Pasadena, Eugene, Pasadena, Eugene, Pasadena. Okay, so the last two have been one score games. Literally three points separated both teams each time. Both win wins have gone to Oregon. And. Ignoring the 42-21 win in Eugene in 2018, that's gonna that's not gonna be relevant here. The winner of this game is gonna be the one that makes the least amount of mistakes. Be, though these teams, mistakes have cost them games. Oregon, I, like I said, when I said this earlier, Oregon being in the top 25, I cannot trust at all. I've said this all year long because I looked at. Cause they they went they went and played Georgia and got absolutely dominated by Georgia, and then you go oh, look look looking at their schedule really quick. Yeah, see, look a loss to Georgia and then a Eastern Washington team that I think is currently um I think is currently doing pretty good in their FCS schedule. I don't really know, and then BYU. Which was their only ranked win, but somehow that win is an argument as to why they should be back in the top twenty-five. But looking at their win when they were, when they played Georgia, when they were number eleven, so this is so they are actually higher than when they started. They still have an argument for the college football playoff. Unfortunately, I think UCLA here does have the edge here over the um over Oregon. I got to give it to the Bruins here. I just don't see much like I said, I don't trust that Oregon offense or defense to win games that are like this and with this ma magnitude of a uh I don't remember I don't know what it, I, I know what I'm trying to say. I can't think of the words. I, with this magnitude of uh, a chance at the Pac-12 championship, which will be literally in less than a month, or less, no, no, not less than a month, but just over a month from now. Moving on down, you have a matchup that really intrigues me here. It's Texas and Oklahoma State. Now, this one, I'm honest to God, don't know. I honest to God don't know why Texas is still ranked. Iowa State outplayed Texas, left, right, and center, but somehow was still able to pull off the win because of a missed targeting call. 
again, I'm going to say this as an Iowa State fan. Targeting calls have not been our friend friend all year long. And la- and then last sa- and last Saturday kind of proves that. Because Baylor, there was at least two that were missed. And then against Texas, that I watched, I saw that play. That, like, come on. The dude literally lunged at the guy. The, 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 the Texas defender lunged at Deckers, and that's not only did we make head contact to the head or neck area, but it cost Iowa State a fumble, and they lost the game on that. Now, I'm not solely blaming the loss on that because it, a couple plays earlier, uh, Hut, Xavier Hutchinson did drop a key pass that probably would have won Iowa State the game, but it let but let's say that that let's say the play got broken up, and now we have to rely on something else, and that's the play that decides it. Granted, granted, we're not talking Iowa State; they are off this week, as you see in the sheet. Iowa State off this week, but that video. Look, look next week we will talk more about that. But, look, but looking at this week, we have Texas, Oklahoma State. I can see both of these games going, this game going, eh. It's kind of a weird way of putting this. Like I said, Texas coming off a, uh, probably would have been their second, their third loss in the year against Iowa State. But they were able to find a way to squeak out the dub. And then looking at Oklahoma State, a close battle with TCU, and but come up, fall, un, un, ultimately falling short, forty-three to forty in double overtime. This one could, honest to God, go either freaking direction. And th- and with that one, uh, it is at Boone Pickens Stadium, so it does have home field advantage. Texas is the favorite. Somehow, uh, if Texas loses, they're out of the Big Twelve race, and I don't think Texas is good enough to win the Big Twelve this year. But they are good enough to probably make a really good bowl game. Probably, uh, I can't really say the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl because that would be the I that would be Iowa State. That would be the Big Twelve's uh, champion appearance. I say Texas will probably go to the Alamo Bowl, to be honest, because they're that they're that good. They can make a good bowl game. And the Alamo Bowl, not saying it's a crappy bowl or anything, but that's actually a really good bowl game that a lot of people want to go and play at. Because the Alamo Dome is a really beautiful, really beautiful stadium, as I've heard. But with that being said, I am gonna take the Oklahoma State Cowboys in this one. It is it, it is an afternoon game. But it's and it, with it being at home with in uh where is it at where is it at where is it at where is it at? I keep forgetting where it is where is this still with it being in Stillwater I think Oklahoma State can pull off this win. Moving on down you have Boston College and Wake Forest. Oh really quick I gotta make a pause here. The reason okay I'm actually gonna slide over a little bit to show Elijah doesn't have his picks yet. At the time I'm recording this, it is 12.40 p.m. on on Friday. Elijah is currently having surgery right now. So that's why his predictions aren't here. I let him know that I was going to go ahead and do mine while he was under, so that way I can get the video up. Because it's Friday as I'm recording this. So me me and him haven't been able to get the video done at all this week. I should be able to have more time next week to do uh to do the video for next week but i don't know exactly what day the video is going to be recorded i'll have to co- i'll have to talk to him about that because he'll we'll be at home recovering from surgery for i think the next week i believe i don't know but um uh looking at my work schedule Okay, so yeah, I'll be so yeah. I work the rest of this week, 
And then I'm going to say Thursday is probably going to be the only day I work. So, Elijah, when you watch this, Thursday is the only day I'm going to probably be able to record. Unless we do it early on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. That's the only days I'm probably going to be able to record. But, yeah. Move, okay, back back to the predictions here. Uh, moving. Okay, we made the Oklahoma, Oklahoma State game. Moving on down, you have Boston College and Wake Forest. Now... Wake, where is that at? Right here. Wake Forest. They are, have only one loss, and that is to Clemson. And then the win against Florida State. And then they took a bye week from the ACC to go play Army, which they dominated Army. And then that's all. That's So they've only played two conference games. Looking at Boston College, one and three. You can see all three... Uh, no, two and four, three of their losses already on screen, all of them being um, uh, conference games. This uh, this one is kind of too easy to call. I'm going to pick Wake Forest here. I just do not... How do I... I'm probably going to have to just do black with gold. Oh, wait. No, there. I got it. Okay, so black lettering... There you go. I'm thinking Wake Forest here. That's just too easy. That's just too easy to call there. Wake Forest is... Wake For Look, I mean, the spread is literally 20 and a half. Which, that's not the biggest spread of the week, I don't think. Moving on down, you have Memphis and Tulane. Another new top 25 member of the year. Uh, Tulane having a great year this year. Six and one. They are already bowl eligible. But they are making an argument to win the, confer the conference, the the AAC this year. And Tulane at seven. This team, this game being played in New Orleans at Yolman Stadium. Yeah, Tulane is out of New Orleans. There's two colleges, and there's not only the New Orleans Saints. There's also the Tulane Green Wave. So Saints fans, keep an eye out on Tulane this year. They're actually doing really flipping good. I've been keeping an eye on my keeping an eye from a distance on this one, so, and then and let's take a look here at Memphis, Memphis and Tulane. Looking at both of these game teams, Memphis does have last year's win, but they've split the last one, two, three, four years. So I it's it been home, 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 home. Home, home, yeah. So it's always been home wins. Uh, the last time that a team won on the road was Memphis in 2016 in New Orleans. So I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna pick the home sign here. The first time we throw out the teal for the Tulane Green Wave. That does not look good at all. Let me try and reverse this. That doesn't look good either. What the flip? Um. Uh, eh, yeah, that'll work. That'll work. So I'm picking two lane in there. I'm really liking how that team is performing. I haven't been able to watch them at all this year. I really haven't. And I'm glad. And I'm sad that I haven't. But. I'm kind of excited to see how they how they end up the year. Tulane top twenty five, uh, picking them. Moving on down, you have our you have an SEC matchup between Mississippi State and Alabama. The kick heard around the world at Knoxville on Rocky Top, as Alabama falls for the first time this year. There's a possibility that they go down this week too. There's a possibility they go down this this week too. They're at Bryant Denny Stadium in in Tuscaloosa. Both these teams coming off losses, but two very good teams here. Uh, Mississippi State. Uh, Mississippi State has the win over Arkansas, the win over A and M, the win over Bowling Green, but the loss to LSU. Alabama and LSU have yet to play this year, and I think they do play this year. Well, that that game's going to be later on in the year. That might be our game of the week that week. And then you have University, and then you have Alabama at 
uh, beating Tennessee, A&M, Arkansas, Vander... No, losing to Tennessee, beating A&M, Arkansas, Vanderbilt, and Louisiana Monroe. Uh, I want to pick... I want to pick Mississippi State to win this game so badly, but there's just nothing that's going to stop the Crimson Tide here. I got to pick Alabama here. I don't think Alabama's going to be able to get... I think they could recover, but there's a possibility that the college football playoffs, because I think they start this week. After this week, I think we're finally in the college football playoff rankings for the first time all year. It's either this week or next week. I can't remember when they actually start doing it, but that, but yeah, that's going to be, that one's going to be really interesting. Moving on down, you have Elijah's pick for game of the week, and I am confused as to why this one's game of the week. Because, well, one, it's Minnesota and Penn State. Yes, it's a dip into the top, it's a dip in back into the Big Ten. Where in the heck is this game at? Y'all are probably screaming. It's right there. It's right there. I do not see it. I do not see it. What the flip? Okay, hold on. Function F11. Nope, not F11. F3. There it is. Okay. So the the spread is four and a half, but you're looking at a Golden Gophers team who is com- who is coming off back to back losses to uh, Big Ten opponents, and then you're looking at a Penn State team that got absolutely dominated by Michigan. I I I can understand where Elijah's coming from on this. I really do. It is a Big Ten matchup. Both these teams do need wins to. Have to put themselves in a better chance at making the Big Ten title at the Big Ten Conference Championship game. Uh, Minnesota needs it more than needs it more because they are they're in fourth, and Penn State is third, and somehow Nebraska is three and four on the year, which honestly surprises me. Honestly surprises me. So we're gonna have to. Uh, I forgot what I was saying. Ah, <laughs> okay. Refresh, reset. Minnesota, Penn State. Looking at the standings here, uh, you got uh, min- you got Minnesota right there in the middle of the pack. Uh, not not too high, not too low. Iowa being the worst. Uh. Iowa being almost actually, uh, well, no, they're tied they're three and three with, oh my God, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just going to make a pick here. I'm going to pick Penn State. It, I'm pretty sure it's, I'm pretty sure that this, this, this is a no brainer for anyone. So I'm, I'm picking Penn State here. Moving on down, you have Kansas State, TCU. I just don't understand why he picked that game for. Uh, it's it's whatever. I got. It. We'll be all right. Moving on down, you have Kansas State, TCU, uh, and then and then we're gonna get into some unranked games. What am I at for time here? I'm at 29 minutes. Holy crap! Okay, I gotta book it. Okay, and we got. Oh Lord, Lord. Okay, Kansas State, TCU. Uh, this game is going to be really fun. Both these teams coming off, uh, Kansas State coming off a bye week after a close win against an Iowa State offense, against an Iowa State defense that shut them down for only two scores. But Iowa State was not able to get the not get, be able to get the offense going. Moving over, TCU coming off five straight wins, uh, actually undefeated on the year, so they're making a massive push for the uh, Big Twelve title. Baylor, basically, we can rule them out of the Big 12, the Big 12 title game. Somehow, Iowa State 0-4 in the conference. All those games being one point game, being one possession games, which shocks me. But looking at, but looking at the rest of the schedule, but looking at the, gosh dang it, looking at the rest of the standings, get TCU and Kansas State at the top. Both of these teams, if Kansas State wins, they take sole possession of the top of the 
up the, in the top of the conference. And then if TCU wins, they can basic they basically have locked out every other team below them, un, unless some, unless something else happens. But speaking just speaking of this game, they've locked everyone out of getting the top the top spot in the Big Twelve for the week. Uh, I'm actually going to side with that. I'm picking. Uh, I'm gonna pick the. Uh, I'm gonna pick TCU here. Uh, actually, let me do. Let me do purple with black numbers. Because I haven't. I've done black with purple. I haven't done purple with black yet. Okay. Finally, into the not top twenty-five games, you have Kansas and Baylor. This one shouldn't be as hyped as everyone is making it. Baylor coming off uh back to back losses and then Kansas what the flip just happened? Okay. What the flip? Okay. That's lovely. That's lovely. I'm still rolling, right? Yes. Great. Okay. That's fine. Uh, I think uh, Kansas coming off the loss over Oklahoma. Uh, if this would flip and load, that would be fantastic. But it's deciding not to load, which is really weird. There we go. Okay. So, like I said, both these teams coming off... Actually, both these teams coming off back-to-back -back losses. So... This so this game could go either way. Both teams both win beating Iowa State by a single point or by a single possession. Turning and then turning around and then losing back to back games. So like the the game day traveling to Lawrence that was a waste of time. Game day is yet to go to Baylor this year. I don't think they are going to, but I hate picking I hate picking both these teams. I really do. But I'm gonna give the edge to Kansas here. Uh, I think Kansas, Kansas hasn't proven anything to me just yet, because I mean they've pro I've been the one that they've been proving right. They're overrated. They are not as hyped as they are. And now they've faced a they they faced TCU, lost, and then they faced Oklahoma and lost. So five straight wins and then two straight losses. But I think, but Baylor, I think, is worse than Kansas this year, even though it's at home. Actually, no, it is on the Kansas is on the road. I don't think they've beaten Kansas. They've beaten Baylor in Kansas or in Waco in years. So I'm actually going to switch switch my pick right here. I'm picking Baylor here. Oh, dark green. I'm picking Baylor here. Uh, moving on down, you have Duke and Miami. This one, going back, if I remember correctly, this was the, re I think this is a rematch from 2022, from 2020, where Duke, where Miami was able to sneak out a win on, on the, la on the last kickoff of the game because, um, they were apparently not ruled down. I'm not gonna get into that. But... Oh my god, I am all over the place for this video. I'm sorry, guys. I am all over the place. Ah, crud. And Duke. So yeah, Miami is on a two-game win streak. It was... What year did that happen? Twenty fifteen was it? Twenty fifteen is when that happened. Wow. Okay, I am completely lost then. So Miami winning the last two, with this game being in Miami, I can. I'm gonna give it the edge to the Hurricane here. Uh, dark green and orange. I'm gonna give the edge to Miami here. Moving on down, you have another Big 12 matchup. You have West Virginia and Texas. I got to get book in here. I am already at 35 minutes, and I haven't even – I'm just now getting into the not-ranked opponents. I talked about um, – I don't remember which game I talked about 
a lot. I think it was that Syracuse Clemson game. Uh, West Virginia, Texas. Uh, let me get back up here. Let me go grab it. I should have had the links ready, but I wanted to get the I got I wanted to get the video done and over with. There it is. West Virginia, Texas Tech. Um, six and a half, six point favorite for Texas Tech. West Virginia coming off a win over Baylor, but a lot a loss to Texas and a win over Baylor. Texas says Texas Tech coming off back to back losses. Both games were on the road. Uh, they need a good bounce back game. I think this is going to be a good one for them to, to bounce back with. I'm going to pick the Red Raiders here. I'm going to pick Texas Tech here. Moving on down, I'm going to go quickly for the rest of these. You got Purdue and Wisconsin. Wisconsin needing wins badly, as we saw in the Big Ten rankings earlier. Where is it at? There it is. Needing wins badly. Uh, coming off a loss to Michigan State. And then Purdue with four uh, four, four wins in a row. Um, like I said, Illinois, or not Illinois, Wisconsin is needing wins. They are, where are they at? They're, yeah, they're there. They're currently last in their division that I was in. I think that's the Big Ten East. And yeah, that's the Big Ten East. Excuse me. Wisconsin's currently last. They need wins, and Purdue is a really good, could be a really good bounce back game. But I think Purdue is a little, Purdue might be too good for Wisconsin. Uh, but with it being at home, this is a toss up for either side because Purdue knows how to go on the road and win games, and Wisconsin hasn't been able to secure a win at home other than what was it their first game of the year yeah they beat illinois state then they lost to washington state then they win against north yeah so they're two and two at home so like i said this one is a massive toss-up for me and i'm actually going to side with i think this is the first time i'm doing this all year I'm so not West Virginia. I'm going to side with the Purdue Boilermakers here. I think there's just too much, too much, too many, uh, too many game, uh, flaws with that Wisconsin with with that Wisconsin team. This one is going to be a, a Purdue win on the road. Next up, we're gonna dig a dip back into the group of five. You have. Uh, who is this? Georgia Southern and Old Dominion. Where is that game at? If I can find it. Georgia Southern, Old Dominion. There it is. So this game is going to be on ESPN, ESPN Plus. Two and a half point favorite for Old Dominion. This one could be interesting. Now, G Georgia's... Georgia Southern coming off the upset win over James Madison. I picked James Madison because I really wanted to see J predict James Madison more. I just smacked my hand. That really flipping hurt. But if we look at their last five games, there's these two teams have only won two games in their last five. Uh, Old Dominion, a loss to East Carolina, a loss to Virginia, uh, a win over Arkansas State, loss to Liberty, and then a win over over Central, uh, Coastal Carolina. I was at Central Carolina. I was like, what? And then looking at Georgia Southern, uh, the loss to UAB, the win over Ball State, the loss to Coastal Carolina, loss to Georgia so Southern, or Georgia State, and then the win over James Madison. And if we take a look at the uh, standings here, Old Dominion is actually at the top of the conference with only two wins. Coastal right below them because the only reason they're below them is because of the loss to Georgia Southern. And I do, and, and yeah. Uh this one's just going to be this one's going to be a dog fight. It will be. I'm going to give the I'm going to give the slight edge to the Monarchs here. I'm going to give the slight edge to Old Dominion here. 
Moving on down, you have Houston at Navy. Now, I'm going to throw this out here really quickly. Yes, we're not, we haven't even had the first leg of the Commander in Chiefs trophy matchup. We haven't. That isn't prob that isn't going to be until I think later on in the year. Let me look here. Is oh no, we already have. Uh Air Force is already up one game on everyone. So Navy automatically is probably the best they can do is split it with Army and Air Force. Uh, but I think our Air Force is actually decent enough that that trophy is going to Colorado this year. I'll get to that. I'll get to that once I get to Air Force because I actually think we're predicting them this week. But but looking at Air Force or Houston and Navy, both these teams are having really bad years. Now, yes, their record is three and three and two and four. That doesn't mean anything when it comes to predictions here. That really doesn't. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Houston. I'm gonna say Houston with the win here. Navy just hasn't been able to lock down anything. Their only win on the at home was against Tulsa. And Na so Navy's just not not been good at home. So I'm gonna pick the Cougars here. Uh, white with. So I'm picking Houston here as my game or as my prediction there. Okay, next up, yes, Southern Miss, Southern Miss, and Texas State. This one I haven't picked Texas State at all this year, so we haven't been able to keep an eye on them. But I think the but this is one of the games that Elijah threw in here, and I think the reason why is because of the spread here. It's a two point spread for Southern Miss, so. Could go either way here. The loss to Troy. Okay, hold on. I gotta ask. What is with teams winning or losing by the score of 17-14? to 14? That has been a trend all year. 17-14 has happened one... Let me, if I can count this. I, I think more than 10 times already. Which has been weird. Like, it's like, I looked at it, I'm like, did this game get simulated in an NCAA football game? I don't know. But, this one, like I said, this one's going to be close. Texas State with the extra, with the one extra game on Southern Miss. Looking at the Sun Belt here for the standings. This one, uh, both these teams do need. Texas State, if they win, they'll jump Southern Miss and Louisiana. If, uh, actually, I don't, we're not picking Louisiana this year, so they may jump them. Um, and then looking up in the top half of the Sun Belt, we already picked this one, but Old Dominion is up here. And where's the other team? that was? Georgia Southern's right here. So another dip into the Sun Belt for us in this one. Uh, this one is going to be a close game. I'm going to give it to the side of the Texas State Bobcats here. I just, I haven't been able to watch either one of these teams, so I can't really tell you how how these teams have been playing all year. So next up, you have another ACC matchup between Louisville and uh, Pittsburgh at Louisville. Now, Pittsburgh's ha been having a... Kind of a weird year. Where is that here? Right here. I gotta shave. Uh, yeah, Louis. Uh, Pittsburgh has been having a weird year. They beat Tennessee. Or no, they lose to Tennessee when they're ranked, and then they go on and lose to Georgia Tech, which I think, like I said, I think Georgia Tech turned their season around. And then they go turn around and beat uh, Virginia Tech. Looking over at Louisville, they got two losses. One's to Florida State, which that, which that game was really flipping good. Uh, an interception won it, so Louisville could have won that game. And then a one-point loss to Beast to Boston College. This game is going to be an interesting pick here. Um, I really like Louisville here, but I'm going to take 
though I'm actually gonna take my lock here. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm gonna pick Pittsburgh here for the. I'm gonna pick Pittsburgh here for the uh, for uh, for the win over Louisville. I think Pittsburgh. Has, I think Pittsburgh is gonna be good enough. If we look at the standings of the ACC, uh, Pittsburgh is currently third in their in their conference. I don't think you can see that because I think my picture kind of blocks that. Uh, Pittsburgh is, yeah, I, I forgot my picture kind of blocks it. So, uh, can you guys see that? Yeah, no, you can't. There you go. All right, Pittsburgh is currently down. Is currently uh third in the in the in the standings here. Actually, I'm going to move this over here. There you go. Now you guys can see. Uh, Pittsburgh is currently third in the uh, in their division of the conference. Louisville is just ha Louisville is de is last in their division, but don't count out don't count out if they decide to try and make a statement for at least third or second. I don't think they're going to be good enough to make the ACC title game. But it's looking like it can be, it's looking like it could be a uh, a really close battle for that for that top spot. But yeah, I'm picking Pittsburgh in this one. Here we go, Boise State Air Force. This one I was really excited for. I'm a big boys. I'm a Boise State fan. Uh, but uh, but and yes, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to pick Boise State here. But the main reason I wanted to pick Boise State pick this game is because the spread was two. Now, this game is at Falcon Stadium in the in the United States Air Force Academy in Colorado. Which that's its own city, apparently. Uh I don't know. But this game but looking at the Mountain West standings over here to the right, uh Boise State's currently sitting at the top of the north division of the uh Mountain West. Air Force is is literally on the doorstep. Yes, they have two conference losses, but you're looking at teams ahead of them: Utah State and Wyoming. They, uh, Air Force and Boise State, both have an extra game on those. Because if you take the two, if you take the two and and get minus at one, and then move put that one on their wins, that's three and one. So Air Force has already had their bye week. I think. No. How does that work? I don't know. There's teams that have and have literally one extra win and one extra game on everyone. And I don't know how. But yeah. Uh this one is uh, so looking at the last five for both sides. Fresno State was a win for Boise State at home. And then South Dakota State was a win for Boise State at home. Uh, that game actually started out really rough for Boise State. A, uh, I think it was a touchdown with a mixed extra point. And then San Diego State got a blocked punt and returned it for a touchdown. And that's all San Diego State was able to score. Then Boise State was like, oh, hey, we're a football team. Let's get the defense rolling. They got the defense rolling. They have... Uh, San Diego State did not score a single point after that blocked punt. So, 35-13. And then looking over at Air Force's schedule, a loss to one. See, another one. 17-14. to Wyoming beats uh, Air Force. Nevada with the win. Air For Navy with the win. Now, I did say I would get to this, and this is where I'm getting to it. Air Force, if we're looking at the standings of only three teams... So it would be Air Force, Army, and Navy. Our Air Force and Army have to still play each other. If Army beats Air Force, the best the the best that Air Force and Navy can do is tie. Because that would put Air Force at one and one in the standings in the Commander in Chief's trophy, which that is an actual trophy. I'm actually going to look this up really quick because actually I think this is one of the best trophies in all of college football. Commander-in-Chief's trophy. 
I think it's like I said. I think it's one of the best trophies in all of college football. So you look. You have the United States Military Academy. This is Army. This is Air Force. And where is... There it is. And there is Navy. So yeah, they have the, they have all of the different mascots on all three sides of the trophy. That is an amazing trophy. If I, I'm going to have to do a ranking on each uh, trophy of... of of not just of rivalry games for college football. I'm, that might be a good video idea, but yeah, this is the trophy that Air, that Army, Navy, and Air Force play for. Uh, they like once the team wins it, they'll brandish it on their side that they win it with on the team that wins it. And you can see the coat of arms are also around the trophy. That's really cool. But I think going back to the game that we're currently talking about, which is Boise State Air Force. I'm going to give the edge here to Boise State. Now, yes, this might be a biased opinion, but, I mean, sue me. Sue me if it is. I like Boise State. Um, they haven't been able to win a game in Air Force. Uh, Boise State, hold on. Boise State Broncos. Air Force found. I could have literally just clicked on it. So, yeah. Uh, Air Force finally ended the streak of losing to Boise State. Their first matchup was 2011. That was when Air Force actually joined the Mountain West. Uh, then Air Force went on a three-game stretch. Then Boise State went on a four-game stretch. And then Air Force broke it up in Boise State. Boise State's looking for, looking for the rebound. I'm going to give it to Boise State here. And then finally, before we get into the Iowa games, you have Louisiana Monroe at... Army. Now, like I said, I brought it up earlier. The Commander-in-Chief's Trophy is still up for grabs because Army has yet to play Air Force. That game, I think, happens in a week or two. No, it happens next week at 10.30, and that is a neutral site game. So that might actually be our game of the week for that because that is a Commander-in-Chief's Trophy battle. So... Uh, I'm actually going to pick Army here. Army needs a really good rebound. Army needs a very good rebound here, so I think they do get it. So I'm going to pick the Black Knights here. Okay, now we enter the Iowa schools, and we're at 52 minutes of recording time. I might as well have streamed this because I ta basically talked like it was. Um, I basically talked like it was an hour-long stream. Uh, you got Iowa at Ohio State now. This, is, unfortunately, is the Fox Big Noon kickoff. I hate the decision. I really flip and do. The Fox Big Noon kickoff definitely should have been UCLA, Oregon. So, but, unfortunately, it's not. We get Iowa. I'm not putting the O in there because Iowa has still yet to show the offense against OHIO State. So, this one, this is the biggest spread that I've ever seen in a Big 12, in a Big 10 title game. It is now at 30 points for Ohio State. So, Iowa would be lucky to even beat the spread. So, that means Ohio State has to get to 35 in order for in order for Ohio State to beat the spread, but if, but looking at uh, looking at Iowa's schedule, the loss to Iowa State, like I said, no offense to show for. Offense finally showed up against Nevada and Rutgers, but it didn't really show up at all against Michigan and Illinois. We're talking the one of the worst offensive performance under Kirk Ferentz. In years, we really are, and this, and I just don't understand why Fox Big Noon is wasting their their time in going to this game. I really don't. But it's be, I, the only reason that I that everyone is saying, and this is the reason why everyone's saying this. Only reason everyone's saying it is because it's Ohio State, and unfortunately, that is going to be my lock of the week. Oh crap. Wrong one. I keep flipping doing that. Ohio State is going to be my lock of the week here. 
Iowa cannot do anything with the football. Unless they either fire Brian Ferentz or they bench Petrus and put in their rookie quarterback. So, I'm going to go with Ohio State. And then finally, when we're donning the hour-long mark of the video, I talked so much in this video. I think this is the last. This is the first time I've talked for an hour straight in a long time. You have Northern Iowa hosting Missouri State. This one, I don't have much of a spread to go off of, but we are talking a Missouri State team that is coming off Four consecutive losses. One of them being to a ranked Arkansas team, which that we can't really blame them for that. But you go up against a South Dakota State team, a North Dakota team, and then a Southern Illinois team that Missouri State usually beat. But unfortunately, not this year. Now, Northern Iowa got a massive bounce back game when they needed it most. Uh, their fourth straight home game of the oh, fourth straight home game. Uh, you and I think it's going on the going on a bye week next week, so it would be nice if they went into it with a three and two conference record and a four and four record. And looking at the Missouri Valley Conference standings, South Dakota State, Southern Illinois at the top, Northern Iowa. If they get lucky, they can play for the conference title. I don't think they do have conference titles in the FCS, but if they did, uh, Northern Iowa is going to need a lot of help. Uh, I think even Northern Iowa still has North Dakota State coming up later this year. No, they don't. They have South Dakota State, and that is a home game. So they are down to their final four games of the year, and I mean, yes, they have. They've got a. They've had a good rebound year. But it would be nice to it'd be nice to cap it off with four straight wins. I think that's a good I think this is a really good way to start. I'm gonna give the win to Northern Iowa here. I'm gonna give this win to Northern Iowa. And that's gonna be my predictions for the week. Uh, like I said, Elijah was in surgery when I recorded this video. So send him some love in the chat, guys. He really needs it. Uh if he comes out and sees all the nice comments, I'm pretty sure he Pretty sure he'll see how much how much the community that we've made here will actually actually appreciate what he does around here. Uh, but let me guys let me know what you guys think about the predictions this week. Um, this one, like I said, this week was a little interesting to uh, predict, and I kind of liked the fact that um, I did I did Fox College Game Day or Fox College Football's intro for uh, oh shoot. For the intro, I haven't been copyrighted yet for doing college football intros, but I think I've been talking loud enough over them so that way when they play, they um they just fade out. So, with that being said, talk. We'll, uh, we're gonna let it play for a little bit. This was this is our game of the week. It's Minnesota, Penn State. This will be these. This is what you guys will see on the um. Thumbnail for the video. Let me you guys know your predictions down in the comments below. Hit the like button. Hit that share button. Send this out to people. Let's start growing this channel, guys. This is where this is. This, I'm starting to actually get it. I'm enjoying getting into doing these predictions videos for you guys. Just let me you guys know what you all think. And until next week, enjoy your weekend of college football. See you guys.